Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith. We're going to be unboxing Palm Island today. This is published by Portal Dragon. I'm really excited for this. This is the plastic card edition. I don't know if you guys remember, but for those of you that were with the channel back when we did the Kickstarter preview, these are always exciting for me to see a prototype move from the prototype stage to the final product. And it's really exciting to see how this turned out because I remember my experience with this game doing the Kickstarter preview and how much I enjoyed enjoyed it and I cannot wait to show you guys the final product for those of you that did pick it up already you might have even gotten it way before me um, I'm up in Canada so it took a little longer for it to reach me uh, for this particular one but I'm still just as pumped for it I did go to Jamaica a few months ago and I was really hoping this would be here in time so I could bring it uh, but it wasn't but regardless this is going to see some serious play time as it is one of the small filler games that you can play right in the palm of your hand without the need for a table which is one of the coolest things ever so many games are tabletop games you need a table to play them but this literally the name itself tells you you can play this in the palm of your hand so without further ado how about we take a look at the outside of the box and then we'll tear it open and see what's inside so right off the top here we've got uh, the plastic card edition we have Palm Island, Portal Dragon, 12 plus, one to two players. You can play this one with another player or competitively, and it's 15 minutes in length. This is, again, the plastic card edition, so it's going to be the, the fancier version of this game. I believe there's a couple different uh, stages or levels to the uh, pledge on the Kickstarter originally, and this was the highest tier. Uh, so Palm Island is a game that you can take anywhere. Sitting, standing, waiting, riding, flying, relaxing, alone, or together, you can play Palm Island island no table required players use just 17 cards to shape their island and overcome its unique challenges store resources to pay for upgrades and upgrade buildings to access new abilities each decision you make will alter your village from round to round complete your objectives within eight rounds and calculate your score very very cool so you can see a little bit of the artwork on the back of the box so how about we go ahead now and take off the wrap all right, so the wrap has now been removed from the game. It looks like this from all sides, just to show you a rough idea without the actual wrap on it. Now let's go ahead and open it up. Now, I don't know the actual correct way to open this. I believe it opens up kind of like this. Ah, look at that. It's a magnet. That's really cool. I do remember that now. So it clicks right back into place, which is nice for easy storage. Opens up just like this, and you can go in here and grab the rule book. So the very first thing you're going to see is a rule book. It's quite small. Again, this is a tiny game, uh, but there's so much replayability in this one. So you've got a rule book that looks just like this in terms of the different pieces of uh, paper and how they're set up. And you can see right from the beginning, basic solo setup. So that's awesome. Right out of the gate, talking about the solo play. This is why this was super popular with the solo community. And I was all over this thing when I heard about the prototype for it because I knew this was going to be something different, something quick to learn, something that can be playable anywhere, and that's something that uh, is very tough to do, especially to have a game that has this many uh, strategic choices throughout it. Uh, there's also the competitive side of things, which you can find at the back of the book, but the rule book you should be able to rip through in no time. So that is the rule book for Palm Island. Uh, the next thing inside of here, now forgive me if I forget what each of these things are, but this looks like a competitive... Uh, these are cards specific to the competitive game, so I might as well go ahead here and open them up and show you. Even though I'm more focused on the solo side of things, I still love to see the different components that come inside of a, inside of a game, especially when we're doing an unboxing. So, let's see. I got one card stuck in here that doesn't want to come out. Now, sadly, Serenity's not around today, so I wasn't able to actually pull her in on this unboxing. I think it would have been fun to do it, but uh, this would have been a great one for her, but she's actually out of the house at the moment so stored resources so these are simply what look to be reference cards for stored resources the card quality obviously has taken a massive jump forward as well as the actual art on the cards and things like that it looks absolutely amazing um, so that's one of the coolest parts of the game is uh, seeing the card quality go up a notch and quite a notch indeed when you're talking prototype to final product then you get the full card here so you're going to actually get these cards now these should be all oh, these look and feel really nice okay so i've got the plastic wrap off the cards these things are awesome so first off they're plastic so in other words i could literally put this in water and it wouldn't be damaged i might even do that just for fun and show you guys but it's really really cool they're they're bendable and they, honestly they remind me very much of the same material that uh, chip theory games uses 
in their products which allows them to be thrown in dirt, mud, rain, whatever you want and they're going to come out fine after a quick wipe. So it's really cool. Of course, they also, they're also, I guess the only downside about them is that when they go into this type of format where you have them uh, being uh, a plastic edition like this, the only downside is they're a little bit more slippery than normal. So usually the Too Many Bones cards, I ran into that as well. But most of the cards in that game sit still, whereas this one you're holding your deck in your hand. So you might find it a little interesting at the very beginning as you try to get used to actually holding the 17 card deck in your hand um, and not having them slosh around. But also there's a point too where it's if it's easier to move them, because it could be argued either way that if they're too slippery, they're going to slip around at a place. But if they're also slippery, the plus is that they can be moved very easily uh, with two hands. So there's that plus. So this is essentially the 17 card deck. You can see that by all the numbers in the top. And then of course you get your round tracker at the back. Every one of these cards looks phenomenal in terms of art. It's obviously much more vibrant than the original ones were. The quality of the cards are better. I'll just flip these over to the side because each of these are, uh, you can see there's point values, right? So you're trying to flip the card and rotate them. If you're not familiar at all with the game, I'm not going to bother explaining it because this is more of the unboxing. You can check out my Kickstarter preview that does a, uh, a full job of actually showing kind of how the game actually plays. But this feels great and I cannot wait to be bringing this on like an airplane or on any type of travel where I'm maybe in a car or something like that and I need something to play. I've got kind of, I'm just gunning to, to play a game of some type. These ones here are a whole different ball game to me. So I wasn't sent a lot of the, and, and, and during the prototype stage, a lot of this stuff. So I'm not too familiar with which section this applies to, whether it's for solo or whether it's for competitive, but there's some really cool things that were added in um, that were not there from the beginning. Uh, or at least, and look, look at this, you've got like eruptions, you got hurricanes, there's weather effects. Uh, it's just, oh, looks so good. So this famine, what are these? So we got ourselves some uh, feats. Oh, that's right. Feats were a major thing. I believe that comes into play for the solo play as well. Uh, so feats are really cool. Vision stone, mark of mountains. Just a whole bunch of these. You got a nice card here telling you what's going on. And then another deck, of course, for the next player because the next player will want to have a hand if you're playing two player. And the same thing. So it looks like obviously you're getting double of everything because you can play up to two players. But if you're just playing single player, at the end of the day, all you even like. You can play this game solo, just the generic solo game, essentially, and be using these 17 cards. Of course, the feats and everything else are going to add more to it and more fun. So once you get used to um, coming up with a good strategy and figuring out how to win and, and get a high point value, then you're going to want to start messing around with the feats because that'll be really fun. But that's essentially it, guys. Of course, it's a very small box game, so it's not a very long and in-depth unboxing, but I'm really happy, and this is a much... Uh, of course, when it comes around from a uh, prototype to a final product, it's just so cool to see it, uh, kind of someone's dream come to life and uh, very, very happy uh, for them. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this was informative and to show you uh, kind of what Palm Island has in store for you if you're interested in it. Thanks again, and as always, keep on rolling gold.